Mike McDonald has established himself as one of the best defensive minds in the league, and now he takes over for one of the best head coaches of the last 20 years in Pete Carroll. Now, I expect really big things from McDonald, but will the Seahawks find immediate success in 2024? Let's go ahead and discuss. What's crack a -lack? It's your boy, Baroshmo, just in case you did not know. So, welcome back to the Deep Dive series where we take a look at each and every NFL team. And I come up with a projection of how they're going to do in 2024. And today, I got the 12th man themselves, the Seattle Seahawks. But before we talk about the future, let's go over the past. Let's talk the 2023 season. Seahawks started the season with a whimper, losing 30-13 to to the LA Rams. Both the offense and the defense just didn't look ready for the season. However, they would rebound really well in a win against the Detroit Lions, where they were down both their starting tackles, Charles Cross and Abraham Lucas. For Abraham Lucas, he would actually miss a majority of the season. In week three, things got dicey against the Andy Dalton-led Panthers, but this began the Boye Mafe breakout season, and Devon Witherspoon was looking every part of a top five pick. They headed into their bye week 3-1 after a win over the Giants. However, they would lose to the Bengals after their bye, and the injuries and the lack of depth along the offensive line really started to show. Seattle would get back-to-back -back wins against the Cardinals and the Browns, but they ran into a buzzsaw against the Ravens. It wasn't all doom and gloom that week, though, as they did trade for Leonard Williams, and this addition would pay off right away as the D-line ravaged the commander's offensive line in a three-point victory. The Seahawks then would go on a four-game losing streak where they lost a couple of close games, got blown out by the 49ers, and Geno Smith got banged up, leading to Drew Locke getting a start in a relatively close loss against the Niners. Locke would start in an upset victory against the Eagles. This was probably the best Drew Locke has looked in his career, but Geno Smith would return in victory versus the Titans. Unfortunately, they would lose the following week against the Steelers, taking their destiny out of their hands to make the playoffs. In week 18, the Seahawks would take on the Cardinals in a very good game. Prior to the final drive, the Seahawks heard of the Packers' victory, thus eliminating them from the playoffs. But nonetheless, Geno Smith led the game-winning drive and Seattle ended the year 9-8. In terms of efficiency, this wasn't your typical Pete Carroll defense. They were 27th versus the run, 29th versus the pass, and 25th in points allowed. There were some young, promising parts on this defense, but ultimately, the front office decided that they wanted to get younger on the coaching staff as well. B. Carroll would step down, although he is still the head of football operations, and his coaching staff would leave for jobs elsewhere. Real quick, I got to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. I absolutely love Underdog Fantasy because I love football, and now that the football season is far and away, it doesn't mean my betting season has to be because they do all kinds of sports, whether it's baseball, basketball, Esports, even they got you covered, whether that's weekly best ball or my favorite higher lower on player props. So, if you sign up at Underdog Fantasy using promo code Bro Schmo, then they will give you a first time deposit up to $250. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. So, if you're gonna go and bet, bet with Underdog Fantasy, use promo code Bro Schmo, take advantage of of this offer but please bet responsibly and bet within your means the seahawks bar ways with some of their older heads like quandre diggs jamal adams and bobby wagner but they were also unable to bring back some of their younger talent like guard damian lewis and linebacker jordan brooks but let's talk about what they added in the offseason now, the Seahawks didn't really go out and spend a lot of money. They were actually focused on retaining some of their better talent, like Leonard Williams. They brought back Noah Fant. But they did add some parts here and there. For instance, along the offensive line, they brought in George Fant, who offers some insurance because Abraham Lucas, we don't know how he's going to how he's gonna really be given the, the, I think it was an injury to his kneecap. So there's a little uncertainty in his future. And even when he did return last year, it wasn't necessarily great, even though he wasn't completely healthy, in my opinion. But adding George Fan, who has really established himself as, I would say, a high-end backup at this juncture in his career, I think is actually pretty nice. And they also brought in Lincoln Tomlinson, who's going to compete 
for well, probably going to win that left guard spot. Tomlinson's coming off a down year. I mean, he didn't really have a good tenure with the Jets and really he hasn't been that good since his contract year with the Niners. So you're kind of hoping that he has some sort of bounce back, but that's honestly relatively unlikely. But it was a team. This team had a dire need at guard. It, they're kind of plugging it with some bridge options, replacement level starters. But let's take a look at what else they brought in because guard guard was a bit desolate for him but so was the linebacker position and they're bringing in jerome baker on a one-year seven million dollar deal i actually really like this sign in because jerome baker may not have been my cup of tea in miami he was fine like he, he's a cat that has that sideline to sideline uh just athleticism and ability he's a former safety when you go back to his days in college so they get some athleticism there. I like it. I don't mind it. But they also decided to add uh, Tyrell Dodson, who's actually coming off a pretty darn good year with the Buffalo Bills, where they had injuries there with um, Matt Milano. Dorian Williams wasn't necessarily ready to start. And Dodson really stepped up for the Bills last season and had a quality year. So that's going to be your linebacker uh Seemingly, your starting linebackers this upcoming season both are on one-year deals, so they're essentially replacement level stars, or at least in the eyes of the Seahawks. Though maybe with a strong season, they can make a case to get an extension after the year. I will say it's one of probably the worst, not best looking linebacker cores in the nfl but they certainly it certainly could be worse it it truly uh truly could be worse but let's look at some of the other additions uh kevon wallace comes in as a uh uh as a depth piece someone who's gonna give give them some some flexibility on special teams uh, safety position, they did kind of like say bye-bye to two of their starters and Diggs and Adams, but Julian Love is still there. He does have that flexibility to slide into the slot, but Devon Witherspoon kind of held down the slot position for a majority of last season. I don't know if they're really going to kick him outside as of right uh, right now, and if you're familiar with a McDonald defense, you know that the slot position he kind of likes that to be interchangeable with the safety position. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see when it comes to that. They did also add Rashawn Jenkins, more of a box option. So Julian Love's really probably going to more so be playing uh, deep, though, when it comes to McDonald defense. You're going to be playing a lot of too high quarters. So both your safeties are going to be playing a good amount of deep. And I actually like that fit, uh, Jenkins, the fit for a McDonald defense because He's not going to be afforded a lot of space uh, to have to cover on the back end. And when they do to go to more of those cover zero looks, I think he is capable of guarding tight ends. Um, if you're going to have him play a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage. Uh, they added, uh, I mean, they bring in Jonathan Hankins. He's really just kind of a, a, a big boy. They needed some more girth on that defensive line because it's not like Williams or Draymond Jones or who they drafted this past uh, year, who we'll talk about in a sec. But uh, Byron Murphy, those aren't like your, they're not like 320, 330. They're not going to be guys that can uh, create pileups in the middle of the, the line of scrimmage. They're not going to be guys that can create uh, just got to be space eaters if you will, in the middle of that uh, defense. Along with that, they bring in LaVisca Chenault Jr. This is kind of interesting. Uh, they do bring up, I think, uh, D. Eskridge, who I think is kind of on his way out anyway with the uh, Seahawks. But Chenault's interesting. He's going to give them some re uh, return capabilities. He he's a guy that, uh, that should work well in some of the uh, quicker passing elements of rubs defense with or offense seemingly again 
we'll we'll talk about when we get to the coaches but grub is kind of a big question mark in terms of what he's going to do in the nfl at oc nonetheless so that will be very very fascinating uh pharaoh brown good receiving option at the tight end position uh they did draft like an aj barner who we'll, we'll talk about the draft minutes uh draft picks in a sack but uh aj barner who's going to be more of that blocking option so they got uh pharaoh who's going to be the receiving threat when they go to like two tight end sets uh no offense seems like there, there's a vote of confidence there that he was the tight end they chose to bring back over guys like will disley and uh kobe parkinson who i, I was actually really high on kobe parkinson so th that did make me a little bit a little bit shed but it is what it is kind of already explained uh jenkins what i expect his role to be uh, nick harris in all honesty probably competes for that starting center role uh it will be uh olu oluwata timmy's job to lose he's the guy that uh this organization drafted keep in mind p carroll still very involved with uh the, at least the front office so uh like it's gonna be interesting i'm a big fan of Oluwata Timmy, I liked him coming out of uh, his final stop was Michigan, former Air Force, then went to Virginia. Uh, I actually really liked him quite a bit, but I also liked Nick Harris when he was coming out of Washington uh, all of like, what, four or five years ago. And he hasn't really been given the light of day to really get some starts. But when we have seen him, he's actually been a very good pass protector. It's just at his size, like, he's like sub 300 uh, that... The run blocking element's a little tough uh, for him, unfortunately. But uh, Artie Burns is back. Yay. Yay. Again, a couple of re-signings here like uh, Daryl Taylor. Uh, they bring in Tremaine uh, Ankrum, who's really, at this juncture, just a journeyman backup. He's, he's depth. Not much more. But let's go ahead. Let's take a gander at what they drafted so with the 16th overall pick they decide to go with byron murphy he ends up being the second defender off the board and i was a big fan of byron murphy he kind of like stole my heart last season uh, i'm also apparently just a sucker for uh that texas defensive interior over the past couple of years i like really liked guys like uh ojamo and uh you had uh coburn uh, this past year sweat and then murphy who i honestly think is the best among those uh other three names that i listed out and murphy this dude's just twitched up great straight line speed he, he's gonna be a penetrator that should use him as such and if anything i feel like this kind of helps you uh whether it's this season or next season get you off draymond jones's contract which felt a little hefty kind of like is what it is you know who he is but I think Murphy's probably ultimately just going to be hopefully the better option there and the cheaper alternative. So I, I really liked them adding that because this, this was a team that needed to add more pass rush, whether that was uh, via the interior or uh, another guy on the outside there. Though they kind of have a uh, they kind of have a good good list of options. We'll talk about that when we get to the defense of what they uh, got going on at edge because. While there's some question marks, there's definitely a lot of talent there. And then in the third round, they go with Christian Haynes guard out of UConn. And he took some reps at the senior bowl at center. Looked good. There, there were some ups. There were some downs. But Haynes was one of my more favorite uh, players in this class. I think that there's a good chance that he could compete for one of the guard spots. I mean, we're talking Lincoln Tomlinson, one-year deal. Journeyman really uh, hasn't really shown it since his contract year with the Niners. Uh, on a right guard, you probably got uh, Anthony Bradford, who looked good at parts, but at the end of the day, still like very much looked like a rookie, especially when you talk about uh, what he did as a pass protector. So, like, I think there's a good shot. Maybe we see Haynes at some juncture this season. Uh, I true, truly believe that. So to open day three in the fourth round, they take linebacker Tyrese Knight out of UTEP. Someone who's not going to start now and just given his like body type, 
uh kind of comes downhill with the head of steam uh feels like he's he got that sideline to sideline athleticism very active against uh the run though the play strength is like oh, okay needs to get better uh, his ability to take on blocks his ability to navigate traffic not exactly like the smoothest guy when having to flip his hips and run with pass catchers so someone that's going to need to develop and i think it's probably going to take a year or two like two maybe two to three years so i really do think uh one of those guys whether it's dotson or baker will be back on some sort of extension but i don't know if i'd really want knight to be starting immediately uh but i don't know man maybe he gets his time to shine and just ends up taking taking to water like a like a fish that's a metaphor uh in round four they also took aj barner some interesting athletic traits even though he didn't really test out like high end but uh yeah you, you at least know you're getting an extremely good block and tight end you can work on the receiving aspect of his game uh later truthfully this is a guy that i think is gonna see uh, a lot of a lot of time on the field just because uh Farrell Brown doesn't offer that as a as a blocker. And then in round five, they snag Nehemiah Pritchett. I liked Pritchett as like an end of day two player. Uh, someone who has started to build that frame uh, while he's like, he is like 6'1", 6'2". Uh, he was a bit lanky playing around the 175, 180 at Auburn. Got up to 190. And... Uh, is actually kind of a, a, a perfect fit schematically, I think, for uh, McDaniel's defense here, where he's someone that has shown that nuance in zone coverage, but also was capable of playing man when they needed him to. And when it comes to uh, McDonald's defense, there will be times where they, they play cover zero. I think they were like fifth or sixth last season when it, when it came to the Ravens on third down, when it came to their use of covered zero. So that is something to keep in mind. Uh, you got Sateo, uh, Lumine Luminea. Can't remember how to say his name. We're so far removed from the draft at this juncture, but he's fine. He's someone that I think probably was going to end up moving to guard when he got to the NFL, but him having that tackle experience definitely helps so someone who could play tackle or play guard uh but more of a developmental option at this juncture and then they double dipped in terms of not just corner but auburn corners they take dj james where and he was a player uh many people were much higher on than i was per se because i again I, I look at the size and i get queasy it wasn't a guy i wanted to invest in early on i had him around more of the midday three area because th this is a dude that's got that dog in him. He really does, despite being a little undersized. And he has shown the ability to make plays on the football. So I kind of like this addition here. They're like, hey, we, we need to get some corners in here. We're not satisfied with our corner position just yet. And honestly, their corner depth, pretty darn good. Like this secondary, I think, is, is going to be better than a lot of people expect. And then they wrap up the draft with Michael uh, Gerald, a tackle out of uh, fin Finlay. Couldn't tell you much about him outside of he will be 25 at the beginning of his rookie season. Funny enough, I couldn't get my hands on Finlay tape. Would have thought. Uh, so, like, uh, in all honesty, there's a UDFA that I think ends up making the squad over uh, a cat like Gerald, who I think is just going to end up being... A practice squad body but let's go ahead let's talk about this coaching staff mike mcdonald gets his first crack at being an nfl head coach and honestly i thought he was one of the best candidates out there like if you're gonna go with a defensive minded head coach he was the best option it, it, what he has done with the ravens truly truly remarkable and like re he really kind of flipped the system there keep in mind taking over for wink martindale who's more of this like man like heavy man coverage press sending blitzes from any which way and when you get to mike mcdonald and this is a cat that really more of a like zone heavy type of uh 
scheme We're talking about quarters quarter match uh but he, he is not sh doesn't like he sh it's not like he shies away from man coverage this is someone who on third down will flip it up will bring the heat and we'll ask his guys to play man coverage, to play sticky. But he's going to be playing a lot of quarters. Uh, typically, not a high blitz rate. Again, he's a different type of animal on third down. When you look at his blitz rate in general, he was at 25th last season with a 21.9% blitz rate. He likes to get it done with stunts and just relying on his front four to get that pressure and it's going to be interesting how that works out uh with this defensive line because th there's going to be some questions here and there about it but if you're unfamiliar with the journey of mike mcdonald uh this was someone who was uh, who was a position coach for the ravens under john harbaugh for quite some time then he goes over to be the dc uh, over at michigan for the wolverines under jim harbaugh and then he returns to the NFL to be the DC for the Ravens under John Harbaugh. So now he's he's just breaking apart from the Harbaugh tree all together. But uh, I, I think Mac McDonald's done done a very very good job with what he wants to do schematically. Not necessarily going against the grain, but taking uh, some of the things that he learned from like predecessors like uh, like a Wink Martindale. And doing his own thing, figuring out what works, and being able to adapt to today's NFL, which is a bit more of like bend, don't break, and find opportunities to create turnovers if you can. So uh, I, I'm really excited. I, I Again, I'm a big fan. You can see my uh, grades for the coaching in, um, in respect to like passing and running, what they can do. And you can see I have very high grades or mike mcdonald and then we get to uh D before we even get to dc like leslie frazier's the assistant head coach here like leslie frazier also an extraordinary defensive mind a guy that i'm really shocked hasn't gotten another nod as a head coach somewhere in the nfl and he is in here as an assistant head coach so just another great defensive-minded uh, coach here to really help with this defense that struggled mightily. Got some young, promising talent, but did struggle mightily last season at defensive coordinator. You got uh, Aiden, I think it's Durday. I'm just going to call him AD. But someone with a very interesting uh, just history because like it's not like th this is a cat that doesn't really have experience call in the defense and i i fully believe that if he needed to take defensive play calling duties at any point or at any juncture for whatever reason that he can do it this was someone who has been a defensive line uh coach with with the cowboys he was a essentially a pass rush coach with the falcons all under dan quinn someone someone who dan quinn has had a lot a lot of respect for and really cherished on his coaching staff now you go back to look at some of his other history and this dude was a defensive coordinator back back over in the uk uh for the london warriors and he was a dc for six seasons where he helped lead the warriors to six straight championship appearances where they won the national championship for those for those six appearances. So hey yo, watch out. I thought he was like I talked about him last year uh when I was covering the Dallas Cowboys in their video. I was like, man, this is someone to watch out for up and coming. And this is my cup of tea when it comes to uh adding guys to the coaching staff. And if you're gonna have a defensive minded coach, then yeah, bring in uh Derde, A D to the coaching staff is the DC to learn under I would argue probably the best defensive minded coach currently in the NFL you can make great cases for guys like uh, Mike Tomlin and such but like yeah man he my Mac McDonald is he's easy top three for me but then there's questions I have questions I have questions about Ryan Grubb because holy 
moly, this is a cat getting his first taste of the NFL. He's coming off a magical season with the Washington Huskies in the college ranks where he was the OC and the quarterback's coach. Uh, he was going to join uh, DeBoer over in Alabama before getting this offer. His uh, previous experience, he was uh, an OC for the Fresno State Bulldogs, but someone who just, again, hasn't hasn't really coached at an NFL level. And now he's here getting, I don't want to say the Chip Kelly treatment, but hey maybe he get, has a better go of it because like it's not like he's going to be under a offensive minded coach no like this offense is going to be his so what is he going to do with it how is he going to because you can't really take what the huskies offense and throw it in the nfl per se you're going to have to make some adjust adjustments so i think for the most part we're going to see again this is kind of guesswork on my uh on on my behalf, I where because again, we haven't really seen rub in the NFL. I think we're gonna probably see a pro spread, we're gonna see a lot out of shotgun, but he's someone who likes to get the run game involved, even when it's ineffective. And we saw that a lot with the Huskies last year. Uh, and it's he's someone that doesn't lean too far into like a, maybe a wide zone or just power concepts like he 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 dips into dips into the bag and takes a little bit of everything like we're gonna see gap uh gap blocking concepts we're gonna see power run concepts man concepts uh outside zone wide zone inside zone i think we're gonna see uh, a bevy of everything but what he what i do expect at least when it comes to the passing game we're going to see some, uh, maybe some RPO elements. Definitely like a quick game to at least maybe give the illusion of a, the, even if we can't get it done with the run game, we're going to get it done in some, some way, some manner. We're going to, we're going to get some easy yards, uh, maybe early on downs, but also someone that knows, uh, really knows how to scheme things deep. And I mean, he had the luxury of having like a Roma doing and now he gets freaking DK Metcalf to do that with. So yeah, I think th I'm going to be very fascinated. I think probably where I'm going to be the most fascinated with is uh, what type of like intermediate passing game are we going to be dealing with here? Uh, and I mean, to be fair with uh, Shane Waldron, who again, ended up uh, going to Chicago as the OC after Pete Carroll. Uh stepped aside those coaches were allowed to go out and interview for other jobs uh walter and really emphasized like the vertical aspect of this passing game with uh geno smith and that's not going to be something i see grub shying away from i i really really don't or sam Howe. sam like if sam Howe ends up getting 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 some starts there keep in mind man geno geno smith got hurt a couple of times last last season so like if Howe has to step in like Something I really liked about how when he was coming out of that legendary 2022 quarterback class was the deep ball. Like this is someone who knows how to put some touch on uh, the deep, the deep ball, and honestly probably could work really well within Ryan uh, Grubbs' offense here. But let's talk about some of the other coaches here on the staff. Uh, as again, we got my, uh, Mike McDonald, we got Ryan Grubb, we got uh, AD, you're going to have uh, Jay Arbro as the uh, special teams coordinator, and uh, I'm going to be honest, I'm only, only familiar with a few of these guys, and I guess I, I could start with the defensive assistant, linebackers coach, uh, Josh Bynes, that name should ring bell, this dude was playing football all of, it feels like maybe a year or two ago. Uh, where he actually had a really good, <laughs> really solid season with the Ravens uh, like three or four years ago. Uh, and he had another solid year with the Cardinals. And this was someone who it's not like he was like this crazy good athlete. He was very much a thumper, like an old school linebacker. But he was able to work, work really well under uh, John Harbaugh with the Ravens there. And he's got some uh, familiarity there with uh mike mcdonald so 
I like bringing him on the staff. Again, I'm a sucker for players that I used to used to watch. Now starting to become coaches. I, I just love that. And it is what it is. But for the most part, the linebackers coach will be, uh, I think it's like Kirk, right? It is indeed Kirk Oliverati. I don't want to butcher his name. I'm going to call him Kirk O. Someone who has been very, very experienced over his tenure. But hey, yo, let's give a shout out to Charles London. Like low key, kind of a solid like position coach. Good quarterback coach. He has experience as a run backs coach during his uh, tenure. Uh, he, I think he did a lot last year. He was with the tight ends for uh, Will Levis. Because, hey, Will Levis, maybe there were some ups and downs, but I think for the most part, Will Levis had a very solid, uh, better than you would expect, rookie season. So, like, yo, give Charles London his flowers. He may not have been able to make it work in Atlanta with Desmond Ritter, but, I mean, eh, who could? Who could? But Matt Ryan had a solid year uh, under London as well. So, L London, I'm very excited to see how he uh, works with these uh these uh these, these quarterbacks where you got like the old savvy vet in Gino and then the uh the young I don't want to call him an underachiever but someone who's got some talent to him in Sam Howe he's got he's got the youth but uh, I'm gonna be honest I'm I'm fairly unfamiliar with uh majority of these guys but th th there are there are some like you got Leslie Frazier in house here. I think that's huge. Let's go ahead. Let's talk the roster. Let's talk the offense. As per usual, you will see my grades for each position group over here. Go ahead. Let's get started with quarterback as yeah, I got a C grade. I think it's a very average group. You got Sam Howe, who's kind of a high end backup, low end starter, who maybe you could get more from, but it's going to be Geno Smith if healthy. He's on the older side. He's 33. He's going to be 34 later this year. But he tends to flirt with being a like top 15 quarterback every now and then, sometimes even top 10. And I'm, I'm curious to see how Ryan Grubb will take advantage of uh, just Geno Smith's vertical ability, ability to take risks deep and hit those shots. We'll say... Being able to keep him like turnover prone is going to be a huge, I think, because uh, last year when it came to turnover worthy plays, you know, Smith had 21. That's hella high, but he makes up for it with his big time throws. He had 32 last year. I mean, we could talk about, again, the backup with um, Sam Howe. It's not like he was better. He hovered around the same big time throw mark with 30 but his turnover worthy plays were freaking 31 so you're playing with some fire there at quarterback and that's why maybe i seem a little bit lower on their position um relatively but i think they're going to be good fits for grub and then moving to running back i think this is one of the better running back groups in the nfl kenneth walker man i feel like he's just on the verge of becoming a top 10 running back in the nfl uh, but he does have Zach Charbonnet bring, breathing down his neck. But that is a good, really good one-two punch that they have there. As uh, Kenneth Walker, I just think Kenneth Walker's vision is just like one of the best in the league. Uh, it, it's up there. It's up there. And I say he flirts with being a top 10 back. Oh, man. The dude's top 10 back. What am I saying? Get that out of here. I had to slap some common sense into myself. But you do look at the depth behind those two guys. And there are some question marks. And we'll get to that uh, a little bit later. Going to their weapons, because I, I guess people will see a B- minus and think I'm relatively low on uh, the sh just the sheer weapons that they have at their disposal, and that's not really the case. It's I think there's a lot of really good units in the NFL. It just happens that the Seahawks kind of sit uh, somewhere in the middle of the league when in, in comparison to some of the other teams in the NFL. DK Metcalf... While he can be streaky, when he does hit, he is utterly dominant. He gives you that big body presence, creates a huge catch radius for his quarterback. He can mess you up in the uh, short game. He can mess you up downfield. He, he's just kind of a freak like that. Like He, he just 
just is top 10 wide receiver in my opinion and then uh opposite of him is probably going to be tyler lockett gives you he's kind of kind of down the stretch of his uh nfl career uh starting to get closer to those twilight years he's exited his prime but he still gives you some vertical ability still gives you some after the catch ability uh but i do think they're going to probably lean a little bit more on jackson smith and the jigba as that as someone who could create after the catch consistent hands sneaky can maybe attack deep and um a guy that just knows knows how to run routes run them to a t does it smoothly might not be the most high-end athlete but can create separation just by virtue of finding the soft spots in coverage and just being a liquid smooth route runner and could also create after that gotta give a little little love to Noah fan man they may not throw his way a ton but like the ability is there truly is i'm kind of curious if we're gonna see him get a little bit more involved uh, as he is the undisputed in my opinion the undisputed tight end one kenneth walker zach charbonnet it's not like they're anything special out of the backfield but if you get the ball in their hands they can create out in space they are hard to bring down so the, the they're li- like okay sure it's not like they're these crazy route running wide receivers they don't need to be they don't need to be they can create it's hella good to me it's again it's a good unit it's a really good unit but where i have probably my biggest questions does come in the form of the offensive line that's just the stone cold truth and i will say i'm not i'm not very confident that these are going to be your starters on the offensive line uh throughout the whole season at least on the interior man because like i mean we could start with the tackles like charles cross i feel like uh i'm kind of hoping this becomes his breakout season uh we we saw it in pass protection last year I thought he got significantly better. Let's see if he takes that next jump to potentially be uh, like a top 15 tackle in the NFL. He's just not right. He's not there right now. Abraham Lucas, unfortunately, did have the knee injury. Cost him some time. Only played about, what, 273 snaps last year. And honestly, didn't look that good in doing so. You're kind of hoping he bounces back because he had a strong rookie season. Like He outplayed Charles Cross, in my opinion. So I'm hoping that the knee injury isn't anything significant that we will see him take this big regression and what we saw last year is actually going to be more of what we see this season. I'm hoping that's not the case. I'm hoping that he's someone that uh, uh, that, that, that bounces back, bounces back well in year three. I was a big Abraham Lucas fan coming out of the 2022 draft i had him as like a top 50 prospect he ends up going to the third round ended up looking like a huge steal at that time bounce back buddy man bounce back so again we have questions at the right tackle position just because of injury i think some of that's alleviated just because you got george fant who's just proven to be reliable is he like gonna blow your pants off no but he's solid we get to the interior and i'm telling you question marks galore i know a lot of people love anthony bradford i thought he was very capable run blocker that had a lot to has a lot to work work on when it comes to him as a pass protector gave up 28 pressures last season uh did only give up one sack but again the pressures kind of indicates like yeah we got some trouble there so like i don't even know if man if he ends up holding down the right guard position all season long because uh keep in mind there is a christian haynes on this roster who is ready to take over any of these interior spots we move to olu oluwata timmy who had a hot 128 snaps last season listen i love Olusagun. i think he has the ability to be a very good pass protector he doesn't have like crazy range as a run blocker but you get him going vertical he could definitely get the job done i got a lot of faith that he's going to be able to hold down that center spot and look good in doing so lincoln tomlinson anything this is kind of my pick for okay christian haynes probably won seat lincoln tomlinson at some point this season uh it's not like he was that great last year yeah again a guy that really hasn't been 
hasn't proved himself worth the type of money he got in New York coming off that career year for San Francisco. He's on a one-year deal. He's a replacement level option. He's a stopgap. If, any, if anything, it's like Christian Haynes. I'm kind of hoping for Bradford to take that next step. I'm hoping Haynes maybe can uh, eventually unseat Tomlinson. I'm hoping uh, Oluwata Timmy ends up being the guy there. But if you're going to sit here and tell me that, oh, no, this line's going to be fine. N not when you have, like, questions with four out of the five starting spots along that F offensive line. I just disagree. And it's not like we're talking like like in terms of like what I think they can be talent level. Like I think the talent's there. It's just these some a lot of these guys are young and improving. Uh, there's some, there's a little bit of injury concern there too as well. So it's like, listen, I got questions. Well, let's go ahead. Let's take a look at the uh, depth on this roster, and we'll just stick around the offensive line. So talked about Michael uh, Gerald. In their sixth round pick at tackle, probably makes a practice squad. I honestly love Garrett Greenfield. I loved Greenfield coming out of South Dakota State. I was kind of a mark for a lot of those South Dakota State players. I think this is, this is someone who could end up sticking to the roster. It's going to be tough because, like, Stone Forsyth, was he perfect last year? Hell no, but he was really good run blocker. I think he's established himself as a, he's, he's a, he is a quality backup. If he's going to have to see some start in action, you're just going to hope that it's not for a long period of time because as a pass protector, uh, it just it, it, it wasn't good last year. But again, someone who they drafted in the 2021 draft, I don't know, and it was a six-round pick, maybe maybe that's an area he ends up getting better at. Uh, but like Garrett, Garrett if, they, if they hold on to a fifth tackle, which is highly unlikely, like Greenfield probably can kick inside the guard. Uh, and that's probably how he's going to stick to this roster. Really, if you're going to if you're going to show some versatility, some flexibility, then you, you're going to have to show you're going to have to do that if you're going to stick to this roster. But like, I I really liked Greenfield. Not the most like he's a solid athlete, good play strength. Did play lesser competition for the most part, but someone who's got has a lot of experience under his belt. Uh, moving to that interior, uh, you, you got Nick Harris. I kind of talk, talked about Nick Harris already a little bit. I think he's a solid option along the interior. Uh, they got Curtis uh, or McClendon Curtis, who was out of what? Chattanooga a few years ago. Uh, I think he was the same drafted the same year as... Was he drafted the same year as Cole Strange? I can't remember now, but I don't know. Could end up, it might end up just being a practice squad player. Uh, may, maybe someone like Gary Greenfield holds to the roster rather than a uh, rather than Curtis. Maybe uh, the other six round pick here. Uh, you got and Lameo could stick to the roster. He's currently listed as a guard, but again, play tackle there at Utah, so he gives you a little versatility. But they also brought in uh, Ankrum, who's honestly an all right backup at this juncture but really no more than depth at this juncture in his career so like the depth's actually a little bit better than you would expect like mainly a tackle i don't have really any concerns but you get to the interior and it's like okay nick harris is solid but now you're kind of like hoping uh some of these rookies end up being good but if they're if they're gonna have to step in early it's like eh, i don't know if i love that i don't know man Talking about the weapons, let's go to a uh, receiver. As Jake Bobo showed showed some goodness last year. Th this cat is your wide receiver four. Uh, like he came out and he had some solid games. He truthfully had some solid games. Uh, ended up finishing with just under 200 yards, but he did have two tutties. One of, one of those tutties being like oh, a game winner, I think, uh, or at least one to giving them the go-ahead touchdown. Uh, so, like, Bobo, for me, is your wide receiver four. Uh, you got Eric uh, Young, who's just been a very quality special teamer. We haven't really seen much of him when it comes to the offense. What he brings to the squad is special teams ability. 
So like the, those are going to be your five guys. D. Eskridge, I honestly think is on the way out. I think LaVisca Chenault probably has a better chance of making the squad than uh, D. Eskridge. That's, that's where I'm at with it. Uh, couldn't tell you much about Cody White. Aesop Winston Jr. He was part of that air raid offense in Washington State years ago. Uh, he's really just kind of a possession receiver guy at this point. Journeyman, practice squad. Uh, D. Williams, I think he was the undersized player from Tennessee. I can't really tell you off the top of my head, but he had return capabilities. Uh, Hayden, Hayden. <laughs> Awesome name. Uh, coming out of Idaho. Uh, long shot to make the roster. It's not like he's got crazy athletic traits. Very much more of a... More of a possession type of receiver. Uh, but for the most part, like you got a good start in three. Bobo, he showed a little bit as a wide receiver. Four. Uh, and I actually really like LaVisca Chenault making this roster. I really do. I think I like it over Eskridge, who's just shown nothing since coming into the league. Do you have, like, how many receptions do you even have last year? One. One reception last year. Missing me with that. Uh, only played in one game? Oh, was he hurt? Was he a healthy scratch? Let's see. Oh, yeah, he was suspended for a point in time last year. Forgot about that, but he did He did have a uh, rib injury uh, at, at some point this past season. I don't know, man. He hasn't shown it yet. I don't really. I, I'm kind of out on him. I'm sorry. Uh, going to tight end, you got Farrell Brown, kind of the receiving option at tight end two. A.G. Barner, the blocking option at tight end two. Uh, I will say... We we saw with Grub, we saw with DeBoer's offense, they 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 liked using a halfback there. So guys like Brady Russell and obviously Jack Westover, who played for the Huskies last year, have a viable shot of not just making this roster, but having a role in it. Like Westover was more so that guy that was playing like the the H back there. So I'm kind of fascinated. Let's go. Uh, couldn't tell you about Tyler uh, Maybry. I don't really think he's going to be in the tight end four discussion. If anything, it's it's Russell or Westover just because I, I I see I see a path. I see a path. Go over to the running back. Uh, Kenny McIntosh. I was a big fan of Kenny McIntosh coming out of the 2023 draft. Uh, he is, I think, probably it, it, if he if he gets a chance to shine, probably maybe their best receiving option out of the backfield. Uh, in terms of what he did last year, man, I don't think he was he wasn't healthy for much of the year. He had a knee injury, uh, and I don't think he had a reception. But he also re brings return experience. Uh, do you have any carries during the season? I don't see any. So, did he ended up just missing the year. Uh, yeah, he played zero snaps last season. So, I'm holding out hope that uh, that that he he can carve out a role. But it's gonna be hard to like see much time pass Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet. But uh, Kenny McIntosh was someone who is a very good, very, very good receiving back when he was coming out of the 2023 class. Also brings return capabilities. Uh, on the other side of that, the flip side, you got George Alani, who was honestly probably not drafted largely because of injury concerns there at Boise State. But like he is a power back. He brings that power aspect. So he, he's kind of this different cup of tea. Uh, Kobe Lewis, I believe that was, was that Florida Atlantic or was that Louisiana? Can't recall, but the tester really wasn't good with him. So, that out of here. Uh, Ricky Persons, I just don't, I don't, I don't see those two guys making the roster. I do think it's Halani, big back, capable red zone threat. Kenny McIntosh is significant, brings something significantly different than the rest of this roster. And then you, you got your you, you got your bell cows, so to speak, in in Charbonnet and Walker. 
And then at quarterback, talked a little bit about Sam Howe. Comes from that Mac Brown RPO heavy scheme. Uh, and I think that that can work to his advantage if he ever has to see playing time this season. Uh, PJ Walker will be the emergency uh, quarterback. I think that's a solid option. He saw a co- uh, start or two last season with the Browns. Uh, I think it was two starts with the Browns. They weren't great. <laughs> But nonetheless, this is your QB3 on the roster. That's fine. That's a okay. Let's just go ahead. Let's talk about this defense because I got some hopes. I got some hopes and aspirations for this defense. Let's uh, start with the defensive line. You'll see my grades over here to the side. As you can see, I got the run, the, the run defense and the pass rush kind of as middle of the league units and i think that's fair but i am very high on this coverage unit and i will say some a lot of that some of that a majority of that is projection but i feel like could could be a safe projection but let's talk about the defensive line uh you got boy mafe who had a bit of a coming out party last season someone that we knew had that upside to him uh, that when he came out of Minnesota, it was like, this dude's stupid explosive. He's just got to be kind of a bit more nuanced as a pass rusher. And I thought we saw aspects of that last year. Uh, it ended up having 58 pressures, nine sacks via PFF. And then starting next to him, uh, I'm going to go with Uchina Nwoso, who missed a large part of uh, last season. Oh, man, I don't have... What, what was the injury? It was a pectoral. Pectoral injury. He ends up uh, only playing 283 snaps. Uh, but someone went on the field, I think, is a very quality edge, too. Like, if you want to go back and uh, just look what he's done. the Like, go back last year, he had 62 pressures, 10 sacks. Uh, go back to what he... What he did his contract year with the Chargers, 41 pressures, five sacks. So, like, went ahead and essentially doubled his sack total, uh, was better at getting to the quarterback last season. So you're hoping he can stay healthy. You, you, you really, really are. He's young. He's still young, dude. He's 27 years old. Like, his birthday is in December, will be turned 28, but he's still young. So, like, I, I, I'm hoping he makes a bounce back. I'm hoping he can stay healthy. We'll talk about the depth in a second. Going to the interior of that line. It's kind of hard to pick out who will be the lead snap getter. uh, Because Jaron Reed is still here. That's kind of the guy that they've uh, felt okay with playing at nose tackle. So he honestly might end up uh, edging out. uh, Edging out a guy like Draymond Jones. Uh, I will say it was close last year. You had Jaron Reed with uh, 809. And then you had Draymond with 762 snaps. So it was very, very close. And I mean, we could we could honestly right here talk about Byron Murphy maybe starting to cut into Draymond Jones's workload. Because I said earlier in the video, man, Jones kind of felt like the, like the move to get Bri- Byron Murphy feels like let's get off of Draymond Jones's contract. I honestly, honestly believe that. Uh, and then, I mean, it's not like the production was too different when it came to Jaron Reed and Draymond Jones. I know that they play different positions, so to speak. Draymond Jones more of this three-tech penetrator, while Jaron Reed's playing a little bit more Around the nose, but also has that versatility to kind of really play anywhere on the offensive line. So now that I think about this, I, I think it I should have put Jaron Reed here as uh the starter. These are just your who the guys that I think are gonna be your, your lead snap getters. So yeah, in hindsight, I feel like I should have put Jaron Reed here over Draymond Jones. Uh is what it is. It's already done now, but then uh I haven't really talked about leonard williams just yet leonard williams played really well for the squad uh played in 10 games last year uh after being traded at 32 pressures or sacks was solid against the run 
uh someone who can play around uh the b gap someone who can uh play over top of the tackle probably gonna be mainly playing that like inside four tech but uh someone who like i don't like the idea of giving him a lot of money like i don't think he's that dominant but he, he has been exceptionally solid over the course of his career and probably is the most consistent piece that they have along this defensive line but let's talk about the depth of this defensive line because like i do think i do i do i do have some reservations when it comes to it uh and more so is just kind of waiting who, who's going to be the guy that steps up like you got boy you got you got williams and we'll also stay healthy quality edge two but uh like you look at the rest of the edge group daryl taylor at best is a rotation edge had 27 pressures six sacks last year not someone who's going to be playing well against the run he just doesn't have that dog in him uh Derek hall is he is he gonna see more playing time he only saw what he saw like 300 some snaps last year and really did a hot lot of nothing with him so there will be some curiosity when it comes to that there will be that's just gonna be the name of the game i uh, i will I, I will be curious i'm kind of curious who actually will be the guy that drops into coverage between these guys and i keep going to daryl taylor being that guy but like uh i mean if i'm gonna be honest like it's probably probably nawusu like if you go back to his 2022 where he played a full season he had 100 snaps in coverage like, and it wasn't that far off for him to do that with the Chargers. Like, his contract year, he played 781 snaps, had 56 cover snaps. Like, that, that is something that McDonald doesn't necessarily, like, ask his edge players to do. But he likes them having the ability to do it. So, because, I mean, who's going to be the Kyle Van Noy? That's I guess that's the question. Who's the Kyle Van Noy? Of this team and it's probably Nuwusu. i'm probably gonna peg Nuwusu with that but yeah again haven't really seen a lot of good from Derek hall just yet granted rookie year was a second round pick uh daryl taylor's kind of just a rotation option this juncture uh nelson caesar ends up being a uh udfa like a solid player but is he i don't think he's going to be much more than a rotation option if he makes the squad if anything Okay, you want something that might might get you a little excited? Sonny Anderson over here. Uh, I believe this is the cat out of Grambling State. Let me just confirm that. This is, okay. This used to be Sundaya. Uh, Sundaya? Zadata? I don't know. He's going by Sonny now, so it's irrelevant. Who's got length. Might not be like a high-end athlete, but someone who was very productive at Grambling State. Showed a little bit at the Shrine. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Kind of, uh, kind of like, uh, kind of like him potentially making the team over like uh, a Nelson Caesar. We'll see. We shall see when it comes to the rest of that defensive line, more so the interior. Uh, you had another big body space eater and Jonathan Hankins. Uh, they did draft Cameron Young at the fourth round in 2023. It hasn't really shown much. Uh, played 200 snaps last year and really didn't do much with them. If I'm going to be honest. Uh, Byron Murphy, I'm excited to see him play. I'm kind of sold on him. He, like, I'm curious what the rotation is going to look like. What's the, the snap split when it comes to guys like Jaron Reed, Tremont Jones, uh, and Byron Murphy? Because you already know Leonard Taylor is going to have his. Sue's going to be on the field a ton. He's going to crack 800 snaps. Easy. The question is, what will be the the the, the snap total after that? Because, like, you look at it last year, like, one of these guys is going to be in the 400 range while the other two are going to be in uh, that 800 to 700 range. Who's going to be at that 400 range? And, and I'm telling you all, the more I think about it, Draymond Jones is that guy. 
more that I think about it. Mike Morris is also on the squad. Uh, didn't really do much of anything last year. Only played a handful of snaps. Uh, but does kind of best fit in that Leonard Williams role. Uh, they have Miles Adams, who, again, didn't see a ton of snaps last year. Uh, they got Devere Levelston. Again, another guy uh, akin to, like, he's more of a four, uh, inside four tech. Uh, that's kind of what he was at SMU. But kind of a long shot to make the roster. Let's talk about the linebacking core. Uh, is this is where... Some of your, your new starters. Again, if you don't know what green is, why their names are in green, that indicates that they will that they, they weren't with the team last year, and I expect them to start. They'll have an R next to their name if they're a rookie. Well, none of them are, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, Jerome Baker, again, he's going to be the athlete of the bunch. You're going to be hoping to get splash plays from him uh, in coverage. Tyrell Dodson is a, brings a bit more balance to the unit. But uh, looking at the depth at linebacker, they got Drake Thomas. Very, I think he's going to be a good special teamer. Uh, someone with that blitz potential. So I think he kind of lines up more with Tyrell Dodson. Uh, I think uh, Knight probably lines up more with Baker in terms of, okay, this guy that's got some athleticism can move around. Uh, I think he kind of lines up best for that. Couldn't tell you much about O'Connell or uh, was it Radigan? But uh, Easton Gibbs kind of was like uh, less good Chad Muma coming out of Wyoming there. I'll say less athletic, but Gibbs is solid. He, I think he sticks to this roster as a special teams player. I think he can make it as a special teams player. Uh, it, it would require this team to hold on to five linebackers. We'll see. Uh, Devin Richardson, name sounds familiar. Is that Oklahoma State? Washington State. Okay, I, I, I can't tell you all much about him. I'm totally ignorant when it comes to him, so I'll just go ahead and not talk about him. Uh, when it comes to secondary, low-key, this secondary is going to be good. Low-key, this secondary is going to be good. Uh, I think Reek... Wolin has a bounce back. I'm hoping. Uh, this is kind of, I think this is the right type of scheme for him. Truly do. This is someone who is very good with his vertical speed. And if you're going to ask him to win in man coverage, you're going to have to ask him to do that with his size, which I think Matt McDonald will do. So, like, uh, I'm excited for Wollett. Again, I know last year was kind of up and down for him. Uh, there was a time where he even got benched. Uh, but it's not like last year was, like, terrible for him. He only he allowed a completion rate of 62.1%. Very solid. 10 pass breakups, 2 interceptions, and only allowed 3 touchdowns. I mean, in retrospect, I mean, that's... That's not... not not that different from uh, Devon Witherspoon. Now, granted, kind of a different animal for Devon Witherspoon because he was doing it a majority of that in the slot at 421 snaps in the slot. So when you look at his, like, oh, allowed a completion percentage of 57.4%, and he did that in the slot, that straight up, that just means more because there's a lot more gimmies when facing slots slot receivers there that's just the truth so it just means a whole lot more than uh tyreek wool and 62 percent on the outside uh i was kind of torn ultimately uh when it came to who's gonna be the corner two and yeah ultimately i settled with michael jackson this is a guy that the the squad has shown uh i would say shown faith in played over Almost 500 snaps last season. Uh, I think he did miss a game or two, maybe with an injury, but they've shown faith in him. I know it's a new regime, but it's not a new front office. Pete Carroll's still there. This dude didn't allow a touchdown last year. A lot of completion rate, close to 70%. Yeah, that's not great, but he didn't allow a, yard, a lot of yardage at that. So I'm going to give him the nod. 
But low-key dark horse is Trey Brown. I freaking loved Trey Brown coming out of Oklahoma, out of Oklahoma. I thought his size might pigeonhole him into the slot. But he has shown to be feisty on the outside. He really has. I'm I I will I'm gonna just come out and say I really hope it's Trey Brown who ends up winning the corner two spot there on the outside. And you could even work him inside and out with Devin Witherspoon. You truly can. Uh, when it came to Trey Brown last year, allowed a completion rate of 63.8%. Uh, had five pass breakups, two interceptions, did allow three touchdowns. So that's kind of working against him in comparison to uh, Michael Jackson. Hee <laughs> hee. But it's going to be close. It will be close. So again... I get why the organization likes Michael Jackson. It's not like he's played. He didn't play bad last year. Uh, I know the year prior wasn't great, but last year didn't play bad. Trey Brown also did not play bad. I kind of, I, I kind of want to see him get a go. Kind of want to see him uh, get a go. Let's talk about the uh, depth at the corner position because they got some guys. They got some guys. Uh, there's Nehemiah Pritchett again. Huge fan. Huge fan of Pritchett. Uh, he's honestly someone who could maybe even contest for a corner too. Uh, they list DJ James in the slot. Good. That's where I thought he was going to go. Uh, just undersized. I think he's got the sub length as well. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but he's currently listed as the backup there in the slot. Uh, guys like Artie Burns, Andrew Whittaker, um I'm be honest i don't care too much about Artie burns it's cool he played all right last season but he is a depth player through and through um you got lance boykins probably a long shot i'd probably give the nod to burns to potentially make this roster but again you have like a fifth and sixth round pick you want to really keep one of those guys on the roster at least one of those guys are gonna are gonna make the roster Question is, can Burns usurp maybe a James or a Pritchett? Uh, Carlton Johnson is here, former Fresno State corner. Lots of speed. Didn't really stick out too much, though, at the Senior Bowl. Uh, if anything, if he was going to be drafted just because people were like, oh, my gosh, look at that 4-3 speed. That would be the only way I thought he would have been drafted. I had a UDF, uh, UDF, UDFA grade on him. Uh, but I think I did have him as a priority free agent. Let's talk safety group because honestly, it's kind of vital when it comes to McDonald's defense here. As uh, you're going to be getting Rashawn Jenkins. I think Jenkins can play good with this squad. I, I, I truly, truly do. But he is a box safety through and through. But I mean, if you're only giving him a quarter to cover at the back end, I think you are really doing a good job of hiding some of his weaknesses uh, when it comes to when they do go to like cover zero i think he is capable of playing uh playing man on a tight end uh he has honestly been okay like his first two years in jacksonville weren't great last year he it was a hell of a lot better it it really was he had six pass breakups two interceptions I know some people are going to look at like the three interception number he had in like 2022 and think it was all that and a bag of chips, but like the rest, he, he was basically giving up plays deep. Like the difference in yards that he allowed in 2023 compared to like 2022 was a world of difference. It was a world of difference. And this is someone you can get going as a pass rusher uh, over the last two seasons. He has 16 pressures and two sacks, and that's only on 79 pass rushing snaps. So, like, hey, you can take advantage of that. Again, uh, on third down, McDonald likes to get a little kooky. He likes to get a little, little, little kooky. Uh, but I do think the star here is probably going to be Joy and Love. Like, I'm a big fan of Love. I'm a big supporter of Love. He can come in and play the box. He can play in the slot. He can play deep. Uh, it's not saying he's going to put up production like Kyle Hamilton, but he's 
probably going to be the one asked to play kind of the Kyle Hamilton role for this defense. I, th I do think he is hella good. Hella good. And uh, this year could be a coming out party for him. Like, he's a solid player. Can he take it to, like, oh, he's one of the better, like, one of the, like, he's a top 10 safety in the league? I'm just not there with that. Like, he's probably in that top 15. But can he get into that top 10 status? I say probably, and I'm still a little hesitant. He's he's a top 20 guy, definitely. Maybe top 15. Can he be a top 10? I think he can, man. I really do. Looking at the remainder of the depth there. Uh, they got Kobe Bryant, someone who uh, he's made the transition from corner to safety. Didn't really get his number called a ton last season. And when he did, it wasn't like exceptional. Uh, he's a special team player. Kevon Wallace, more of a special team player, though. It's going to be interesting because I'm going to tell y'all, Jarek Reed is making this roster. Are they going to keep five safeties? Jarek Reed's making this roster. He was, and for as good as like Derek Young is as a special team player, Reed was that much better as a rookie. So they're keeping him. Question is, do they keep four or do they keep five? If they keep four, who gets cut? Part of me, I mean, they just signed Kevon, Kevon Wallace. So it's like, part of me is like, maybe is it Kobe Bryant? Maybe? I don't know. I think that would be fascinating. They got Ty Akota. Uh, I think he was just kind of a athletic specimen when he came out. He was in a small school, right? Yeah, Montana State. He was more of just an athletic specimen when coming out. Uh, if he makes a roster, it's because of special teams. He probably doesn't make the roster. Couldn't tell you much about Jonathan Sutherland. Sorry. Not sorry. But at the end of the day, man, I I, 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 I was already sold on this coverage unit, and I feel like I've talked myself more into it. So I think this defense is going to be uh, going to be solid. I'm very excited to see uh, that next step Boye Mafe makes uh, with a healthy Nwusu. I think that's going to be super clutch. Again, probably should add Jaron Reed as the starter over Draymond Jones. It's one of those things you do in hindsight. And you just kind of like talk yourself into it uh, as you're doing the video. I mean, that's what, we, what we're what we here to do, right? We all got football takes. We're here to have good football discourse and try to rationalize our football opinions. And I went ahead and talked to myself out of one uh, football pin. You know, I, I held until till yesterday when I made those slides. So kind of fun. But let's go ahead. Let's talk about how this team's going to do in 2024. Though so when it comes to the Seattle Seahawks, I actually have them having the fifth easiest schedule in the NFL. Uh, and we're going to go over it. And when, when I first go over it, I like to talk about the ceiling of this team. So let's let's go with the ceiling. Maybe Grubb ends up being a really good OC. Geno Smith turns it on, or even Sam Howe turns it on. Uh, regardless, the weapons work out well. Things function really well in the offensive line. You have a couple of guys step up there on the interior. Uh, Abraham Lucas is able to stay healthy and return to uh, that promise he had as a rookie. Charles Cross takes that next step. So let's assume those things as assume. Mike McDaniel comes in. And just takes his defense to that next level. Some of those guys that showed promise, like Boy Mafe, Juan Witherspoon, they just go ahead. They take that game to another level. Uh, again, I talked about some of the stuff in the secondary. How I'm really high on Julian Love. I love uh, Trey Brown, but you also some, saw some good in Michael Jackson, uh, Reek Wolin. He, he has a little bit more consistency, like. Let's say a lot of this works out in the Seahawks' favor. Let's go through this sketty. Because totally plausible that they, they open the year 2-0. This Patriots team, very good defense. Offense, total, not mystery, but it's lackluster. Uh, Broncos kind of in the same boat, but the defense is still a bit of a question mark, right? Again, you could go ahead and check out those uh, those deep dive videos. I've already done those. Now, Miami Dolphins. I don't think y'all. I don't think y'all beat the Dolphins. I'm a Dolphins fan. 
What can I say? Fins up, baby. Fins up. Maybe there's a bias. Well, it's at home. Okay, you got home advantage. They're coming off a mini buy. I'm going to be honest. Dolphins kind of got to win. They kind of have a two-year window where they're probably going to end up paying Tua. And they're going to try to bring back Tyreek. I know Tyreek said he wanted to retire after uh, his initial contract. But now he's kind of like, oh, no, I kind of want to finish my career in Miami, though. So maybe we could work on something where we extend it. So he's kind of like came back on that. So the Dolphins got a lot of stake this year. I'm just going to say that as a Dolphins fan. I don't think y'all get past the Dolphins. Detroit's going to be tough to beat at home. Y'all did beat them last year, so I'll give you the benefit of doubt in this one. Uh, Giants, I think, are a beatable team. Uh, y'all have had a tough time beating the Niners. So I'm going to go ahead and say the Niners sweep you. And th we're talking best-case scenario. I know y'all almost pulled a close one out, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say Niners end up sweeping y'all. Uh, I think this Falcons game is winnable. You're coming off a mini by the Falcons. A lot can go wrong uh, there. We got the Bills. That's going to be a tough game to beat. but at least, or to, Yeah, that's going to be a tough game to win, but at least you get them at home. Uh, I'll give you a home win against the Rams. Again, Niners are going to be tough to beat, but I mean, you got to, I mean, you handle over, you're going to head over to the, to to the place formerly known as Candlestick. And I mean you're coming off your bye. That's a tough game to win coming off your bye. It just is. Uh Cardinals. Let's say you sweep the Cardinals, man. Let's go with that though. Let's send that. Jets. I I could see hey, injuries could occur. Not let's let's not pretend. Aaron Rodgers played all of four snaps last season. Uh, this Packers can be a winnable game. Uh, it's going to mean a lot there at the end of the year. Vikings is winnable. Bears is winnable. Uh, I'm going to have you all split with the Rams. So the, 12 wins. That's a ceiling. That's a ceiling play. Let's go back through this, though. Let's talk about where I have them. Because, uh, shoot, man, let, let me just go ahead and get my record prediction out. I have you all at 8 and 9. I do think there's going to be I do think there's going to be some dysfunction with the offensive line. Uh I think Geno Smith's going to be I don't think we're going to see Sam Howell this year. If Geno Smith is healthy, I don't think we're going to see him. I think Geno Smith's going to be good enough to hold him off. Uh however, he will be more in that 15 to 20 range when it comes to the best passers in the league. He is going to be more of a middle uh middle of the road starter. So, I do think the offense isn't going to be able to bail them out. Uh, I still think Geno is probably going to have those turnover worthy plays. And then when it comes to the defense, I'm actually a little bit higher on the defense. How big of a jump they make, that's going to be the question mark. But let's go back through this. I'm still willing to give you all these two wins. Uh, I'm going to take this away. I think Detroit's out for revenge after what y'all did to them last year. Uh, I, I, I firmly do believe that the Niners are going to sweep y'all again. Just kind of is what it is. I'm going to take this one away against the Falcons. Uh, I do think you could split with the Rams. Uh, I, I think the Cardinals are actually going to be. Like, I know I'm lower on the Cardinals than everybody, but I think this is a winnable game for the Cardinals. Uh, maybe this Bears one I take away. Uh, that has y'all at a win. So that that's more so where I think the schedule is going to be, even though it's a very favorable one. So, like, in all honesty, I had this team between 8 to 12 wins. I just have them at the lower end of that. I mean, again, if things do kind of hit the fan in year one, I mean, we could be talking about, like, five, six wins. But I think a wins is a bit more plausible. Maybe 8 to 9. I think that's just where the Seahawks are. I do expect a lot of just, again, I, I expect the defense to be much better this year. I expect some guys to break out or break out further. I expect uh, that dysfunction in the offensive line. I, I don't expect the quarterback play to really, my favorite saying right now is blow your pants off. It's just not going to blow your pants off. But they got the weapons to really do a little something with it to be able to stay in games even when maybe even when the defense gives up a little bit i think this that's a bit more fair but let me know what you think in the comment section below you can check out my other deep dives down here or 
You want to take an early look at the 2025 NFL draft class? Been doing my summer deep dive. If you want names for when the college football season starts, I got you covered. You can check that out down here as well. But as always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.